Hello class! Okay, sorry for bothering you or for disturbing your academic break right now. But according to the memorandum number 71 na binigay sa amin, we are tasked na mag-comply sa learning outcomes intended for week 12. Okay, or yung sakop ng ating ACAD break. So, uh, we are tasked to provide video lectures, yung dapat na lesson natin for that week or yung mga activities for that week or case analysis for that week. Okay, so uh, here's a video lecture na dapat ay uh, i-discuss natin. Okay, nung walang ACAD break. Okay, but be uh, because you have your ACAD break, so uh, we are tasked to provide a video lecture about these lessons, about these topics. Okay. So, for Unit 4, we will discuss the elements and principles of art. Okay? So, nalaman na natin from our previous lessons na we have different art forms. Okay? Na kapag representational, may subject. Kapag non-representational, walang subject. Okay? So, alam na natin yan. Yung humanities and the arts, philosophy and the arts. Right? So, now, we will discuss the elements and principles of art. Okay? More on the technical side of the artwork. And for our learning objectives, you are expected to understand the different principles of the elements and classification of the arts, learn successfully the methods of creating and designs, apply the principles effectively in creating one's own artwork, and to value the learned principles and rules in art creation and design. So, for our lesson 1, we will discuss the line and the kinds of line. Okay? So, ano po ba yung line? Ano po ba yung uh, mga kinds of line? Iba-iba po po ba siya? Okay. So, yung line, this is a path made by a moving point. Gumagalaw na point. Okay? It is a series of dots, prolongation of points, or a dot that went for a walk according kay Paul Klee. So, as you can see in the picture, okay, yung, um, on my slide, yung series of dots, okay? So, ang line daw, it is a series of dots. Kung makikita nyo sa example, diba, that one, that two, that three, that three, okay? Uh, puro dots. Hanggang sa nakabuo siya ng isang line or parang a uh, dot na naglalakad, diba? A dot that went for a walk nga daw. Line is intended a mark made by the artist to convey meaning beyond its physical description. So, hindi lang daw line siya physically or actual line lang talaga. But lines, different kinds of lines, they have deeper meaning. Okay? We need to uh, convey yung meaning beyond its physical description. So, ano po ba yung iba't ibang kinds of line? We have the straight lines na meron tayong horizontal, vertical, diagonal. We have the zigzag lines and the curve lines. So, let's start with straight line. So, straight line, it is a geometric, impersonal, and differ in the direction. Iba-iba ng direction. Okay? So, itong pahiga na yan, okay, that, yung pahiga, that is horizontal line. Okay? Itong nasa gilid na patayo, that is vertical line. And ito namang nakaslanting position, that is diagonal line. And straight line may move from left to right. Okay, left to right, diba? Horizontal line. Left to right, right to left. Kapag vertical line, pwede din daw top going down or down going top. Kapag slant naman or moving up and down, ito ay diagonal. Okay? And each kind of lines indicates a specific type of emotion. And the best example is the diagonal line. Okay, diagonal line can be um, this one. Okay, itong uh, diagonal line number one nasa left natin at yung diagonal line number two na nasa right side natin. Okay, and these two types of diagonal line suggest two different meanings. It can be positive and it can be negative. So, positive Ito yung ating diagonal line number one, yung nasa left side. So, the meaning of this diagonal line is positive because it conveys action and movement. 
Ma'am, paano pong may action and may movement, hindi naman gumagalaw? Okay? Try to observe. Kapag gumagawa tayo ng mga line graph, di ba? Kapag gumagawa tayo ng mga line graph, ito ang direction natin ay from down, going up, okay, pataas. Di ba? Patungo sa taas. Right? So, yun ay positive ang meaning, okay? Because it suggests action and movement may, uh, may galaw. Okay? That is positive. Yung ating diagonal line number one, yung nasa left, that is positive. Yung diagonal line number two natin, yung nasa right, that suggests negative meaning. Why? Because, because it conveys feeling of uncertainty, stress, and defeat. Kasi para siyang pabalik. Okay? Para siyang pabalik. Kaya nagkakaroon ng feeling of uncertainty, nag-aalinlangan, parang stress, okay? Or defeat ang meaning. Okay? Again, diagonal line can be, uh, can suggest two meanings. We have positive and negative. Next, we also have zigzag line. And zigzag line, ito ay angular lines and abrupt change in the direction of a straight line, thus forming different angles. Okay? And zigzag line daw, it portrays tension, conflict, chaos, or violence. Saan? Sa paano pong paraan? Um, kung titingnan nyo dito sa example, di ba ang dami niyang kanto? Okay? Kung dito ka pupunta sa uh, point na to, from point A, pupunta ka ng point B, yung patusok. Tapos pupunta, babalik ka ulit ng point A. Okay? Tapos babalik ka ulit ng point B. Tapos babalik ka ulit ng point A. Tapos babalik ka ulit ng point B. Okay? So, pabalik-balik. It is unpleasant and harsh. Okay? Kasi harsh, kasi parang may tusok, parang challenges ang pinagdadaanan mo. ba? Diba? Parang may tension, parang may conflict. Okay? Try to imagine kapag magdodrawing ka ng waves of the ocean, tapos ang gagamitin mo na instead of curve line, ang gagamitin mo ay zigzag line. Okay? Para siyang imagine na ito yung, itong nasa slide na to is waves. Okay? Di ba parang ang sakit sa mata? Parang, parang ang harsh tingnan. Hindi calming yung waves. Hindi nakaka-relax. Kasi kapag zigzag line, it's, it portrays tension, conflict, chaos, or violence. Okay? That is zigzag line. And last kind of line, we have the curved line. Okay? It suggests grace, movement, and flexibility indicative of life and energy. So, it forms a wavy line which shows fluidity. So, try to imagine naman kung curved line naman yung ginamit nyo sa waves. Diba? Ito, yung example na yan, that is a wave. Right? So, diba, mas, ano siya, mas relaxing, mas calming sa mata. Why? Because curved line, it suggests grace. Okay? Talagang may movement, kumagalaw. Okay? Flexible. Right? Parang sumasayaw lang yung linya. Okay? So, that is curved line. Okay? And always remember, class, that lines may be short or long, fine or thick, heavy or light, wavy or jagged, straight or curved, but always remember that line will always have a direction. Why? Kasi, di ba, nung pag-aralan natin kanina, na, uh, line is a series of dots, a prolongation of point. Kung wala siyang direction, isya lang ay nakas, uh, nakatigil. Okay? Siya lang ay isang dot, hindi siya line. Okay? So, pero kung siya ay may direction, okay, ako ay isang dot, tutungo ako papunta sa taas. Bu uh, ano na ako ngayon? Vertical line. Okay? Kasi siya ay from a dot, tapos pumunta siya sa taas, yun yung direction niya, yung pataas. So, siya ngayon ay vertical line. Okay? So, kahit ano pa yan, kahit short or long, fine or thick, always remember that line will always have a direction. Okay, so next we have the colors, the properties of colors, and how colors relate and light and shadow. Okay, which is our lesson two. And okay, yan. So try to look at this artwork. Okay, so ano yung nararamdaman nyo? Ano yung nafe-feel nyo? Okay, so dahil wala naman kayong sa, wala naman sasagot sa akin ngayon kasi ito ay video lecture pero I assume, okay, na parehas tayo ng nararamdaman. I feel sad, okay, I feel um, down, parang parang ang bigat tingnan, di ba? Tapos parang naulan-ulan pa, di ba? So parang ang lungkot tingnan, tapos ang bigat, 
ang bigat tingnan, di ba? Parang broken, right? So, what if ganito naman yung ipakita ko sa inyo? Yan. Di ba? So, ano na ulit yung nararamdaman nyo ngayon? Di ba? Parang, ah, uh, ang saya-saya na, wow, ang romantic pala. Akala ko, broken yung feeling. Ay, rom- naging romantic. Ay, ang colorful. Ay, ay ang saya-saya tingnan. Okay? mag na siya sa mata. Okay? And that's how color adds beauty and meaning to all forms of art. Okay? Ganun kaganda ang color. Ganun yung ibinibigay niyang ganda sa isang artwork. Okay? And color... Uh, it adds beauty and meaning, right? And according kay Isaac Newton, color is the series of wavelengths which strike the retina of the eyes or yung tinatawag natin Roy G. Biff. Okay? So, what is the meaning of Roy G. Biff? Okay, we have red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. And saan natin nakikita yung Roy G. Biff? Sa rainbow, correct, di ba? Kahit walang sumasagot. Sa rainbow, correct, right? And yung rainbow na to, di ba? It is composed of the Roy G. Biff colors, okay? And yung uh, color tau, it is a series of wavelengths na kapag tumama sa ating uh, mata, okay, sa retina of our eyes, ay nagkakaroon or nagpo-produce ng color, And we have different properties of color. We have a U, value, and intensity. Yung U, we have the primary U, secondary U, intermediate, or tertiary U. Value naman, we have the shade and tint. Intensity, we have white, black, and gray. So, isa-isahin natin sila. Okay, first, we have the U. U, it is the name given to the color. Okay, kung anong pangalan ng color, that is U. Anong color ng shirt mo ngayon? Okay, that is you. Anong color ng shirt ng mommy mo ngayon? Okay, that is you. Okay? And we have primary use. Okay? And it cannot be produced from combining any use. Ibig sabihin, hindi siya mabubuo kahit anong uh, kahit ano pang colors ang pagsamasamahin mo. Kasi sila nga ay primary use, primary colors. Ibig sabihin, sila dapat yung nauuna. Okay, and we have three primary colors. We have the red, yellow, and blue. Okay, so yan yung ating primary used or primary colors. Next, we have the secondary use or yung secondary colors. And na-achieve natin tong secondary use kapag pinag-add natin yung two primary used or yung two primary colors. Okay, in equal amounts. Okay, ano nga po ulit yung ating primary color, colors? We have red, yellow, and blue. Right? So, kapag pinag-mix mo daw yung dalawa doon sa tatlo, nakaka-form ka ng secondary use. Okay, so try to look at this picture. Again, blue plus yellow, we have green. Orange plus, ay, sorry, red plus blue, we have violet. Red plus yellow, we have orange. Okay? At yung green, orange, and violet, yun yung ating tinatawag na secondary colors or secondary use. Okay? And last, we have the intermediate or the tertiary used or tertiary colors. And na-achieve naman natin to kapag pinag-add natin yung isang primary use at isang secondary use. Okay? Still in equal amounts. Okay? So, pinag-add natin isang primary at pinag-add natin ng isang secondary. Let's take a look at this picture. So, red. Okay, red siya ay primary. Right? Orange, it is secondary. Okay, red plus orange, we have red-orange. Correct? Okay, yellow, siya ay primary. Right? Green, siya ay secondary. So, yellow plus green, we have yellow-green. Okay? So, ganun lang yung tertiary colors. Ganun yung intermediate use. Okay? Yan. So, this is the color wheel na tinatawag natin. Okay? So, blue, yellow, red, siya ay primary colors. Secondary colors, you have purple or violet, orange, and green. Kapag pinag-add natin ng isang primary at secondary, nakakabuo tayo ng tertiary or intermediate colors. Okay? 
Next property of color, we have the value. And value, it determines the lightness or darkness of a color by adding a neutral such as black or white. Okay? So, ito ay nagdedetermine ng lightness or darkness ng color by adding black. Kapag in mo yung black, okay, nagiging dark yung color. So, that is what you call shade. Kapag white naman, ang in mo sa color, nagiging light yung um, color. And that's what you call tint. Okay? Kapag white is added with you, tint. Kapag black naman, that is shade. So, this is the example. Yan. Kung makikita nyo, kapag pinag-add natin yung itong color yellow na to, plus this um, medyo light, okay, I, uh, medyo grayish white na value, so nagiging light siya. Kapag ito namang uh, violet, plus this uh, black, diba, nagiging dark yung shade. Okay? So that is value, the lightness or darkness of a color. Last property of color, we have intensity. And intensity, it determines the brightness or dullness and intensity or vividness of a color. So, gaya lang din ng value, may ina-add tayo. White, black, and gray. So, kapag in natin yung white, sa isang color, nagiging less intense or dull yung color. Lighter in value. Kapag black naman yung in natin, nagkakaroon ng intensity. Okay? Nagkakaroon ng intense na color. So, black, the value darkens. And kapag gray naman, it has the variation in intensity without any change. So, parang neutral lang. Wala masyadong nagbago. So, this is the example. Yan. So, kapag yung nasa taas, okay, yung mga very intense, intense, yung ina dyan is color black. Okay? Kaya siya naging intense. In the middle part, yung ina dyan is white. Kaya siya dull. Okay? Dull siya. Medyo light ang color. Diba? Medyo light ang value. And dito namang nasa baba, that is color gray ang inad. Kaya siya ay neutral lang. Wala masyadong changes. Neutral lang yung color. Okay? So that is intensity. Again, um, look at the right side of the slide. Ang pinagkaiba nila, U, intensity and value. Ang U, that is the name given to a color. Kung anong color ng, color ng shirt mo ngayon, that is U. Okay? So we have primary, secondary, and tertiary U's. Value naman, it is the lightness or the darkness, uh, darkness of a color. So, we can achieve the lightness or darkness of a color by adding black or white. Okay? Kapag black, that is shade. Kapag white, that is tint. And intensity naman, it is the brightness or dullness or, and intensity or vividness of a color. So, kung intense ba yung color, kung vivid pa, kung vibrant pa, okay? kung bright ba tingnan or dull ba tingnan. Okay? Next. We have, yan, color harmony. So, alam na natin na color, ganto ganya. We have properties of color. We have U, intensity, and value. So, paano naman natin siya may apply sa ating mga artworks at sa ating composition? Okay? And color harmony is establishing color quality in a composition. And we have three, monochromatic, complementary, and analogous. So, monochromatic, it is when a single color in the composition is varied in intensity and value by adding white or black. Okay? So, monochromatic from the word itself, mono, isa lang yung ginagamit mong color, single color. And nagbabago lang siya sa intensity and value. Okay, for example, okay, take a look at this example. Okay, kunyari ako, gusto ko yung color blue lang yung buong artwork ko. Okay, blue lang yung gagamitin kong color. Wala akong gagamitin color na other colors. Okay, but para naman hindi maging boring tingnan ang aking artwork, para hindi masakit sa mata, I will use different intensity and value of blue. Okay, different shades of blue. Okay? So, gagamit ako ng blue, dark blue, light blue, pastel blue, ocean blue, okay? navy blue. Okay? So, iba't ibang kinds of blue. Okay? So, that is monochromatic harmony. 
Next, we have the complementary harmony. This is when two colors that are opposite each other in the color wheel are placed side by side. So, ang complementary naman, dalawang kulay na magkatapat sa color wheel, magka-opposite. Okay? So, try to look at this example, di ba? Yung red, ang katapat niya is green. So, kung ibe-base niyo sa color wheel, medyo malayo yung colors nila. Okay? Sila ay magkatapat. Okay? Pero kapag pinagsama mo sila, yung red and green, okay, they create a uh, harmony. Okay? They complement with each other kapag pinagsama mo na sila kahit sila ay magkalayo or magkatapat. Okay? Pero kapag ginamit mo sila sa isang, sa isang artwork, right? Siya ay nagko-complement. Okay? So that is complementary harmony. And last, we have the analogous harmony. This is when use that are adjacent or beside each other in the color wheel is used in a composition. So, kung yung uh, complementary, katapat naman, katapat yung uh, colors na ginagamit, dito sa analogous, yung mga colors na katabi. Okay? Katabi or adjacent. Okay, so, uh, yan, try to look at this example. Parang gusto ko gumamit ng color red sa aking artwork. Okay, red. So, besides from red, ano pa kaya yung pwede kong gamitin na colors? Okay, so kung gagamit ako ng analogous harmony, pwede kong gamitin yung orange, okay, yellow-orange, yellow, okay, yung mga yan, yung mga magkakatabi. Okay? So, kapag na-form ko na, okay, ito, ito yung mga colors na gagamitin ko. Ah, okay, pwede akong gumawa ng sunset or pwedeng fire, right? So, that is analogous harmony. Next, we have the color temperature. This is where uh, relative warmth or coolness of a color. So, ito lang ay umiikot sa warm colors and cool Colors. Kapag warm colors, kumagamit ka ng color yellow or yung mga colors na may uh, yellow as its dominant component. Okay? Kapag gusto mo naman cool ang effect ng iyong artwork, diba, gagamit ka ng blue or uh, any color na may dominant component na blue. Okay? So, this is the color temperature scale. Okay? So, ayan, yung gagamitin natin. Kapag gusto mo medyo warm ang effect ng yung artwork, gagamit ka ng yellow, orange, o kaya yung mga may dominant component na yellow. Kapag gusto mo naman na uh, medyo cool ang dating, okay, gagamit ka ng blue as their dominant component. Okay? So, that is color temperature. And last, we have the light and shadow. And yung light and shadow, this is a work of illusion of depth. Okay? So, ito yung uh, effect na nakikita natin sa mga artwork. For example, kapag yung tama ng ilaw ay nandito sa right side, saan dapat manggagaling yung shadow? Okay? Saan, saan dapat nagkakaroon ng shadow? Okay? So, yun yung light and shadow. It work of illusion of depth. Depth. And we have the technique na ginagamit ng maraming artists to manipulate light and shadow. And that technique is the chiaroscuro. Again, that is chiaroscuro. Okay, the technique of manipulating light and shadow in painting. At ang mga famous artists na gumagamit nito ay si Da Vinci, si Michelangelo, si Rembrandt, at si Caravaggio. Okay? So, they exaggerated the use of shadow. Masyado, masyado nilang inexag. Okay? Ino, Inoayan nila yung paggamit ng shadow. Kaya kung mapapansin nyo later sa example natin, masyado ng dark. Okay? Masyado ng dark yung uh, binibigay na color. Okay? So, kaya siya tinawag na tenebrism or yung dark manner. Okay? And si Fernando Omarsolo naman, famous siya uh, dito sa atin, locally, right? Siya ay gumagamit din ng technique na chiaroscuro. But instead of manipulating shadow, ang minanipulate ni Fernando Omarsolo ay light. Okay? So, take a look at this example. So, as you can see, yung dalawang nasa baba, okay, yan ay 
works ni na Da Vinci ni na Michelangelo ni na Rebrand, okay? So, makikita nyo yung uh, exaggerated use of shadows, right? Kasi masyadong dark, hindi na masyadong kita yung subject, okay? And uh, dito sa right part na artwork, ba? Diba? Makikita nyo yung light. Yung light nang gagaling sa labas, nasa right side. So, yung shadow, okay, na dito sa part na to, sa likod. Okay? Pero dahil nga, um, ginamit nila yung tenebrism or dark manner, so, the exage, okay, in-exage nila yung paggamit ng shadow, kaya masyadong madilim. Okay? So, that is uh, tenebrism or dark manner. Uh, yung nasa gitna naman, that is a painting made by Fernando Amorsolo. So, compare mo dun sa uh, dalawang nasa baba, di ba, ang minanipulate ni Fernando Amorsolo is about light. Okay? Instead of shadow, he manipulated light. So, kung mapapansin nyo, di ba, more on um, medyo bright. Okay? Compare mo dun sa dalawa, medyo bright, light colors lang, kita mo pa yung subject. Okay? So, that is chiaroscuro, the manipulation of light and shadow. So, tayo ngayon ay nasa lesson 3 na, which is the shape and classification of shapes. So, um, previously sa ating discussion na pag-aralan natin na meron tayong lines, different kinds of lines, colors, uh, properties of colors, and light and shadow. So, for now, uh, we will discuss the shape and classification of shapes. So, ano po ba yung shapes? Yung shapes, this is formed when two ends of a line meet to enclose an area. So, napag-aralan natin ng line, di ba? Line is a series of um, dots, okay? Um, prolongation of periods. So, kapag yung line ay na-form na, di ba? At nagkaroon siya ng uh, ginamit yung lines, okay? Para magkaroon ng... Uh, para ma-enclose yung isang area and nag-meet sila, okay, in, at the two ends, at doon natin na-form ang isang shape. Okay? And shape can be flat or two-dimensional and solid or three-dimensional on a picture plane. So, as you can see at the slide, so yung nasa taas, yun ay flat or two-dimensional shape. On the other hand, yung nasa baba naman, that is a three-dimensional uh, or a solid shape. Yeah, and so we have also negative shapes, okay? Negative and positive shapes. So ne negative shapes, those are between the shapes that are not occupied by any form. Ibig sabihin, ito yung shape na na full form na hindi... Um, hindi nasasakop sa isang picture plane. So, as you can see sa ating example, that is positive space and that is negative space. So, kung titingnan natin yung positive space, okay, so yung kanyang object talaga ay yung uh, parang vase, right? Yung color black. So, that is the shape. And kung negative shape naman yung titingnan natin or the negative space, ang makikita natin is yung... Um, Shapes na hindi occupied by any form. Okay? Yung hindi, uh, yung background, kumbaga. So, yung nakikita natin is iba. Okay? Compare dun sa positive shape. So, sa negative space or sa negative shape, ang nakikita natin is um, uh, human face. Okay? Face ang nakikita natin, dalawang mukha. Okay? Kasi yun yung negative space. So, ano po ba yung classifications, uh, classification of shapes? So, meron tayong natural or organic, abstract shapes, non-objective or biomorphic shapes, and geometric shapes. So, yung natural or organic shapes, these are seen in nature. Okay, nakikita natin yung mga dahon, uh, body parts, flowers, um, uh, trees, water, yan. On the other hand, abstract shapes naman, ito yung mga little or no resemblance to natural objects. Okay? So, wala siyang, um, wala siyang nire-represent. Okay? Hindi natin siya nakikita uh, sa nature or sa mga natural objects. Next, we have the non-objective or the biomorphic shapes. And this show a similarity to some organic forms. 
Okay? So, makikita natin later yung example. And last, we have the geometric shapes. Geometric shapes, ito yung usual shapes na ginagamit natin. Yung mga triangles, rectangles, squares, cylinders, and cubes. So, this is the example. Ayan. So, this is the natural or the organic shapes. Okay? Kung makikita nyo, di ba, yan ay flower, um, foot, tree, hand, leaf, mustache. Okay? So, that is organic shapes. Nakikita natin sa nature. On the other hand, yung abstract shapes naman, wala siyang nire-represent or uh, little lang yung resemblance niya to natural objects. So, wala masyadong nire-represent, hindi natin masyadong ma-identify. Okay? So, that is abstract shapes. Next, we have the non-objective or the biomorphic shapes. And uh, uh, ito yung nasa um, taas, okay? yung katabi ng organic shapes. So, non-objective or biomorphic shapes, wala silang, um, para lang din silang abstract, okay? Wala din silang nire-resemblance na, wala din silang pinapakita or nire-represent na natural object. Hindi natin masyadong ma-identify, okay? But it shows a similarity to some organic forms. Uh, for example, para naman siyang tao, okay? Para siyang tao, nare-recognize natin siya as tao, pero hindi yun, yung, hindi... Uh, same, uh, hindi same ng shape or hindi uh, same ng form doon sa nakikita natin, okay? Sa, uh, sa totoong buhay, okay? Sa natural, sa nature, okay? Pero nare-recognize naman natin na, ay, mukha naman siyang tao, ay, mukha naman siyang foot, okay? But uh, on, in contrast to organic shapes, sa organic shapes kasi na-identify natin at first glance talaga. Okay? Kasi yun yung pinapakita niya. Sa non-objective, uh, medyo may hawig lang. Okay? Abstract, little or no resemblance to natural objects. Okay? And last, yan, geometric shapes. Alam naman natin yan. We have circle, triangle, rectangle. Ayan. So, yun lang yung geometric shapes. Now, we will move on to lesson 4, which is the texture, methods of creating space and movement. So, texture, ito yung uh, feeling or the tactile quality of the surface of an object. So, maaring ito yung rough or smooth, fine or coarse, polished or dull, uh, plain or irregular. Okay? So, yung feeling, okay? the, tactile, uh, the tactile quality. Kapag hinawakan mo ay uh, rough. Okay, or is smooth. Okay? So, it adds richness and vitality in paintings. So, yung visual texture, okay, this visual texture, it is where touching the artwork is not allowed. Texture can be perceived by the eyes. So, nakikita lang natin. Okay? Ay, para siyang, ma, para siyang smooth kapag hinawakan. Ay, para siyang rough yung texture kapag hinawakan. Although, hindi mo talaga actually or physically nahahawakan yung artwork, okay? But you visualize, okay? Na imagine mo na agad, na perceive ng eyes mo na, ay, baka kapag hinawakan ko to para siyang smooth. Ay, kapag hinawakan ko siguro to para siyang rough. Okay? So, that is visual texture. Can be perceived by the eyes. Yung space naman, this is the illusion in the graphic arts, techniques that add depth and distance to two-dimensional art. And we have the methods of creating space. First is the overlapping planes or yung interposition. So it creates space when an object covers a part of another object which is behind it. So as you can see at, at the example, di ba, ang unang drinowing is yung mountains. Okay? So uh, after the mountains, pinatungan siya ng uh, grass. Okay? Para magmukhang uh, hindi plain na mountains lang. So may grass. Then ang sunod ulit, pinatungan naman siya ng mga trees. Different different types of trees, right? So, that is overlapping planes, okay? You create space when an object covers a part of another object, okay? Nag-overlap, nag uh, kinokoveran yung uh, another object na nasa likod. So, that is overlapping planes. Next, we have the rel relative size wherein um, it appear large or big indicate nearness and small size 
objects as distance. So, ibig sabihin lang po, pag ang isang subject ay malaki, okay, malaki tingnan, ibig sabihin, it indicates nearness, malapit sa atin, malapit sa point of view ng audience. Kapag naman daw ito ay maliit, okay, maliit, as you can see at the example, right, yung patatlo, yung nasa dulo, di ba? It, ah, uh, It emphasizes distance. Okay? Malayo. Okay? Kung titingnan nyo, is you can uh, you can observe this artwork. Etong si Kuya na nasa um, na malaki, okay? 'Di ba siya yung mukhang malapit sa atin because it appears to be large or big. And yung naman si Kuya, yung nasa dulo, okay, kaya siya maliit para ang tingin ng audience ay nasa malayo siya. Okay? So that is relative size. We also have the position on the picture plane or relative height. Okay? So kung yung una relative size, this one is relative height. And this is a representation is based upon the position of the objects. Okay? So, kung ikaw ay um, kung sa point of view ng isang audience or ng isang viewer ng artwork. Okay? So, kung titingnan ko yung pinakadulo, yung nasa pinakataas, topmost of the artwork, yun yung nasa pinakamalayo. Kung titingnan ko yung nasa pinakababa, yun yung pinaka uh, malapit. Okay? Ma'am, ano pong pinagkaiba nila dun sa relative size at relative height? Parang parehas lang naman po. Again, going back. Relative size, this is more on the size. Okay? Kung large or big or kung small size. Kapag large yung subject, ibig sabihin malapit. Kapag small yung subject, ibig sabihin malayo. On this one, position on the picture plane or relative height, kapag nasa taas, Kapag nasa taas yung subject, ibig sabihin malayo. Okay? Height tayo, height. Kapag nasa baba, yun ay malapit. Okay? So, this is another example. Okay? So, ito yung point of view ng isang audience or ng isang viewer of an artwork. Okay? So, tinitingnan, yung, tinitingnan niya yung picture plane. So, yung tinatawag natin gitna, ayan, or middle ground, that is the horizon line. Okay? Yung Um, ay level ng isang audience or ng isang viewer. So, that is the middle ground. Yung nasa background, that is the topmost. Okay? Yung pinakataas na part ng isang uh, artwork. And yung mga subject na nasa topmost or yung nasa background, consider nila as malayo. Okay? Para siyang malayo. And yung mga nasa bottom or yung mga nasa foreground, the subjects, yun ay malapit. Okay, it shows uh, parang pinapakita niya na malapit sa audience yung subject kapag nasa bottom. Kapag nasa topmost naman, pinapakita ng subject na yun ay malayo sa audience. Okay, so relative height. Color is also used to give the illusion of distance. So kapag gumagamit daw tayo ng warm or cool colors, it can also affect or it can also give the, the illusion of distance. So, kapag uh, gagamit ka ng warm colors, di ba, napag-aralan natin um, on our previous lesson, kapag warm colors, gagamit ka ng yellow or any colors na may dominant na yellow. So, kapag gumamit ka daw ng warm colors, the objects look closer. Mukha siyang malapit. Okay? And kapag gagamit ka naman daw ng cool colors, yung objects mukha siyang malayo. Okay? Look farther away. Okay? So, color is also used to give the illusion of distance. Yan. So, next, we also have perspective. Perspective naman, this effect, uh, this has an effect of distance on the appearance of objects. So, it enables the viewers to perceive distance and to see the position of objects in space. Okay, so kung paano um, 
inilagay. Okay? Kung paano yung distance ng isang object sa distance ng isang objects. Okay? Kung paano ito nag appear sa mata ng viewers. Okay? Ano yung position of objects in the space. So, that is perspective. And we have two types of perspective. We have the linear and the aerial perspective. So, yung linear perspective, probably alam nyo na to. And ginagamit nyo ito kapag may mga um, uh, artwork kayo siguro ng mga high school. Okay? So, linear perspective, this is the perception uh, distance by means of converging lines or the direction of lines and with the size of objects. So, Kapag daw nagkasalubong yung dalawang linya, okay, take a look at this example. Para siyang pyramid, right? Nagtagpo doon sa dulo, sa topmost ng artworks, ng artwork, yung dalawang lines, okay? So, it creates a perception of distance, okay? Parang nagkaroon ng malapit papalayo, okay? Kung saan yung nasa dulo, yung hindi mo na matanaw, yun yung malayo. Okay? And yung nasa harapan, okay? Yung parang malaking yung it appears to be big. Okay? Yung uh, kitang-kita mo. Okay? Dahil it appears to be or uh, na-perceive mo na para siyang malapit. Okay? So that is linear perspective. You use converging lines. Next, we have the aerial perspective or yung gradient. Uh, sinasabi lang nito that uh, effect of haze, mist, or atmosphere on the object. So, nag-create siya ng near objects that are seen in detail with the full intensity of color. Ibig sabihin, kapag daw ang object ay full detail, okay, full detail, kitang-kita mo yung eyes, nose, full intensity of color, ibig sabihin, yun daw ay yung malapit. Okay? And kapag malayo naman, as you can see as the, uh, in the picture or the example, yung malayo, wala na siyang masyadong detail. Okay? Nagkaroon na ng haze or ng mist, okay? Ng atmosphere. Kasi malayo na siya. Okay? Pero yung nandito sa malapit, di ba? Ang ganda, full details, full intensity of colors, kitang-kita mo lahat, very detailed. Kasi yun ay malapit na objects. Kapag malayo naman, wala na masyadong details. Light lang yung color, hindi na masyadong parang faded yung color, okay? Ginamita ng mist, okay? Kaya parang maulap, mausok. Okay? So, that is the aerial perspective. And so, next, we have the movement. And movement, this is the manipulation of the medium and elements in order to portray motion in artworks. So, ito lang yung parang um, illusion, okay, ng gumagalaw na subject. So, para silang gumagalaw yung mga artworks. And we have two ways to present motion or movement in their artwork. We have the actual and the implied movement. Yung actual movement, it is a kinetic art. It is achieved naturally using wind and water or mechanically. Yung implied naman, use, uh, the, the artist uses variety of lines that are used together, repeated, change in position, or decreased or increased in size. So, example. Yeah, so this is the example. As you can see, itong nasa left part, left side, that is actual movement. Why? Kasi talaga siyang gumagalaw. Okay? Um, natural siyang gumagalaw. Okay? Ginagamitan ng wind, right? So, kaya siya gumagalaw. Or pwedeng ginagamitan ng water or uh, mechanical battery. Okay? Pwedeng battery. Basta siya ay actual. Natural siyang gumagalaw. That is actual movement. Kapag implied movement, ito yung nasa right, ito ay paggamit lang ng mga variety of lines. Okay? Parang illusion na gumagalaw siya. Pero hindi siya gumagalaw. Okay? Variety of lines are used together, repeated, change in position, or decreased in, or increased in size. Okay? So, may illusion na nangyari. So, that is implied movement and actual movement. 
Moving along, pupunta naman tayo sa performing arts. Okay? The elements of music and elements of dance. Elements of music, we have rhythm, melody, harmony, timber, form, uh, and dynamics. Okay? So, isa-isahin natin sila. Yung rhythm, this is the movement or pattern with uniform recurrence of ascended and ascended beat. Okay? So, rhythm, ito yung paano yung uh, movement, okay? yung pattern, yung uh, ano ba siya, parang medyo uh, ano ba yung gusto niyang iparating, okay? Ano ba yung pattern, slow ba, okay? So, merong may beat ba, okay? So, that is rhythm. Uh, melody naman, it is the succession of tones, rising and falling of the tune in time. So, melody, ito yung uh, tataas ba, okay? Sa part na to, tataas ba, okay? Mataas ba dapat, or bababa ng konti, pababa, okay? Melody, the succession of tones. Harmony, on the other hand, this is sounding of a series of groups of tones uh, which creates a pleasing sound that is produced when two or more notes are played together. So, harmony, ito ay... Um, Ito yung maganda pakinggan. Okay? Sound of a series of group of tones. Wherein a poor-produce siya kapag ginagamitan ng two or more notes na piniplay together. And pwede siyang, ang harmony, pwede siyang concordance and dissonance. Concordance po, ito po ay combination of sounds that are in agreement which makes it sound good. Con, basta concordance, maganda pakinggan. Okay? Pleasing sound. It creates a pleasing sound. Okay? Ang sarap pakinggan ng harmony. Concordance. Dissonance naman kapag yung combination is not pleasant to hear. Hindi yung masyadong ganang kaganda pakinggan. Okay? Dissonance. Yung combination ng different or ng two or more notes na piniplay together ay hindi maganda pakinggan. Hindi maganda sa ears. Okay, so that is dissonance. Concordance, maganda pakinggan. Dissonance, hindi maganda pakinggan. Okay, so that is harmony. We, uh, next, we have timber. Timber, this is the tonal quality or the character of the tone that is produced by an instrument or by the human voice. So timber, ito ay yung tonal quality. Okay, yung unique, uh, unique tone mo. Kung ikaw ay... Uh, dito papasok yung classification of human voice natin, di ba? So, kung ikaw ay soprano, ikaw ay alto, or ikaw ay tenor, or bass, okay? So, that is your timber. And uh, kapag sa instruments naman, natitinguish natin yung different sounds ng instruments because they have their own tonal quality or their own timber. So, iba yung tunog ng gitara sa tunog ng violin, right? Iba yung tunog ng... Um, ng uh, uh, electric guitar sa bass, right? So, magkaiba yung timber. Yung form naman, this is the structure or the framework of a composition. Okay? And we have uh, two kinds of forms. We have the vocal forms and the instrumental forms. So, vocal forms, we have the opera, cantata, and the moro moro. So, yung opera, this is the drama set to music, complete with actions, costumes, and scenery. So, opera, ito yung, um, hindi ito yung surgery, okay? Ito yung um, uh, drama set to music na merong actions, okay? Hindi lang siya music. May actions, may costumes, and may scenery. May iba't ibang setting, okay? That is opera. Kantata naman, a religious story told in music without action. So, kantata, ito ay nag-narrate uh, nag lang ng religious story through music na walang ginagamit na actions. Okay? That is kantata. Religious story told in music without actions. And last, the Moro Moro, this is the Philippine drama set to music which depicts the conflict between the Christians and the Muslims. So, uh, Moro Moro naman, this is a Philippine drama. Okay? And ginagamit, ng, uh, ginagamit natin ang music para maipakita natin yung conflict between the Christians and the Muslims. Okay? So, that is the Moro Moro. Okay? That is uh, opera, cantata, and Moro Moro.
Okay? So, yung moro moro hindi na siya ganun ka, hindi na siya ganun ka ginagamit ngayon, nowadays. So, that is before. Okay? Philippine drama, ginagamit yung music para ma-showcase or ma-depict yung conflict between two religions. Okay? So, that is a uh, vocal forms. Next, we have instrumental forms. We have sonata and symphony. Yung sonata, these are long composition for solo instruments. So, uh, ano lang siya, parang ito yung mga chords na gagamitin mo, okay, uh, for that specific or for that solo instrument. Okay, for example, yung piano, violin, guitar, uh, cello, yan. So, that is sonata. Symphony naman, this are sonata for the orchestra. So, symphony, ito ay yung composition, yung long composition naman for a solo instrument, pero gagamitin sa orchestra. Okay? Yun lang yung pinagkaiba nila. Pero yung sonata, that is uh, just a long composition for solo instrument. Yung mga chords sa kanta, uh, ano ba yung gagamitin na uh, strumming, okay? Kung paano mag-strum. So, that is sonata. Yung symphony, uh, it is just a, a sonata again, but for the orchestra. And last, we have dynamics. Dynamics is the loudness and softness of music. Uh, mapalakas, papahina, papalakas, papahina. Okay? And we have pianissimo, very soft. So, yung uh, P and P, that is yung kanyang, um, what do you call that? Abbreviation. Okay? So, P and P, that is the abbreviation of pianissimo, very soft. Piano, soft. Uh, MP, mezzo piano, that is half soft. Fortissimo, very loud. And crescendo, and this, uh, the crescendo, ito yung um, transition. Okay? Crescendo, kapag ito ay papalakas na, okay, papalakas, papalakas na. And this, uh, the crescendo, kapag ito ay papahina na, papahina, papahina, papahina. Okay? Yung transition, that is crescendo and the crescendo. Now, to better understand, ano po ba yung mga elements of music? Okay, papanood din natin itong video presentation. Welcome to Music Lessons with Mrs. Morris. Today, we are going to learn about the elements of music. The elements of music are the building blocks that make music interesting. When combined together, they can make music sound amazing. Let's take a look at each element, its definition, and how it works in music. Melody is a series of notes connected together to express one idea. In classical music, an organized melody is called a theme. A composer is considered successful when the listener continues to remember the melody even when the song is over, like the song you just listened to. Harmony is when two or more notes are played together. If you were looking at a music score, you would see these organized groups of notes stacked on top of each other to create a chord. Chords can have a major, minor, or even dissonant sounds that can set the mood of a song, making it sound happy, sad, or even dreamy. Rhythm is music's way of telling time. It is the organization of a variety of beats that create rhythm. Rhythm makes people want to tap their feet, clap their hands, or just get up and dance. Wow, that was a lot of fun, but I have a lot more musical elements to teach you about, so let's move on. Meter tells us how many beats there are in a measure, such as three-quarter time. Three-quarter time gets three beats in a measure. It is the type of music you would hear in a waltz, like one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Four-four time, or common time, is most often used in music. You can hear this meter in a composition for a marching band.
tempo determines how fast or slow a song will go. It is the heartbeat or the pace of music. Italian words are used to describe the various tempo markings. Largo means slow, and presto means fast. And of course, there are several other tempo markings in between. The tempo of music will help to determine the emotion of the music. Slower music might make a person feel sleepy or sad, but fast music will make people feel joyful or happy, or maybe want to get up and dance again. Combining rhythms, meter, and tempo together can create many different styles of music. The combinations are limitless. Dynamics tell us how loud or soft to play music. Italian words are used, again, to describe how music should be played. A word like pianissimo tells us that we should play the music very soft. And a word like mezzo forte means to play the music medium loud. You might also see a sign that looks like a V on its side, and that means crescendo, or get louder. Timbre is an interesting word. It looks like the word timber, but it's pronounced timbre. Timbre is the characteristic sound that distinguishes one instrument from another instrument. For example, what sound do you hear playing right now? If you guessed flute, you are correct. Texture is an interesting element as well. Texture combines melody, harmonies, rhythms, and timbres to create an overall sound of a piece of music. And our last element is form. Form is the roadmap of music. One of the most common forms is ABA form and is heard in many kinds of music from jazz to classical to even pop music. But we will learn more about that in a future lesson. Thank you for joining me for Music Lessons with Mrs. Morris. I hope to see you again soon. Next, we have the elements of dance and we have movement, choreography, technique, theme, design, and costume. So yung movement, ito yung kung paano gumagalaw yung bodies ng mga dancers. Okay? Yun lang yun. Kung ano yung movement ng body, okay? paano siya inorganized into patterns, okay? that is movement. How the dancers use their bodies to move and create organized patterns. Choreography naman, on the other hand, this is how the steps and movements are connected for it to be performed in an organized manner. So, yung movement, okay, wag malilito, yung movement, ito ay yung paggalaw lang ng katawan. Okay, sari-sari lang, sari-sari lang, walang, walang specific steps, walang specific choreography. Basta lang gumagalaw yung body mo in a rhythmic way. That is movement. Choreography, dito na papasok yung meron ka ng uh, organized manner. Okay? Kasi kailangan mo na siyang i-perform. Okay? That is choreography. May steps na, okay, may movements na, hindi ka na basta-basta gumagalaw. Okay? May specific uh, number na, di ba yung... Uh, May specific counting, sorry, may, uh, may specific counting na, okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, ganun na. That is choreography. Next, we have the technique. Technique, this is the skill of the dancer in executing the movements. So, again, technique, ito yung unique, okay, sa isang dancer. So, kung iba yung technique niya kaysa dito sa dancer na to, okay, kasi iba yung uh, skill na meron siya, yung skills na meron siya as a dancer. Okay, maaring ang technique niya is um, interpretative dance, okay? So, parang ang technique niya na iyak siya to feel the, para mas maramdaman lalo yung sayaw, okay? So, that is the skill. Theme naman, this is the content or the main ingredient of the dance. Yung, ah, uh, Yung kumbaga yung subject of the dance. Ano yung gusto niyang sabihin? Ano yung story behind the, art, uh, behind the artwork, behind the dance? Okay? What the dance is trying to convey? Ano yung gusto niyang sabihin? Ano yung gusto niyang iparating? That is theme. Next, we have design. This is the skill of the dancer in execute, executive movements. Okay, so this is not the correct 
correct um the correct definition okay so but the definition okay so design this is a planned organization or patterns of movement in time and space so ito na yung um yung pinaka uh, planado okay planadong steps choreography patterns of body movement okay meron na siyang time okay yung counting natin 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and space saan ka pepesto okay ano ano ba yung sakop mo lang kapag sasayaw ka tatumbling ka ba pupunta ka ba sa likod okay magi-switch ba kayo ng position so that it that is design and last costume this is to enhance the effort of the dance so syempre kailangan natin naka-costume kapag nasayaw why kasi it adds okay add it adds an a uh, uh, beauty okay it enhance the effect of the dance ay interpretive interpretative dance so kailangan pure white para mas ramdam yung emotions ng dancer okay so nakakaapekto din yung costume na pipiliin natin kapag tayo ay sumasaya Next, we also have the elements of drama. Okay, lesson 6 na tayo. But we're still on the elements of performing arts or the combined arts. Okay, so drama, ito ay lahat umiikot sa isang plot. Okay, again, ano nga po yung drama? Drama, it is a genre of literature that is meant to be performed. Okay, and ang drama, ito ay umiikot lang sa isang plot. And plot, this is the overall structure of the play. Kung ano yung story, ano yung pinapakita ng story, ito ay nagko-compose ng beginning, middle, and ending. Okay? So, we have exposition, complication, and resolution. So, ito yung beginning, middle, and ending. Okay? Sa isang story, we have exposition. So, ano po yung exposition? Dito, nafa-familiarize natin kung sino-sino yung mga characters at tsaka kung ano yung sitwasyon na meron sila. Okay? So, dito yung part na ito yung mga paumpisa pa lang ng palabas. So, ito yung part na, ay, si ano yun? Uh, na si Dar na yun. Okay? Ay, si Valentina yun, si Regina yun. Okay? Nagpapakilala yung mga characters. Uh, ay, yung yung sitwasyon nila, parang nasa hospital silang uh, scene. Okay, so yun yung uh, exposition. Next, we have the complication or yung middle part of the play. So dito, nagkakaroon na ng conflict. May problem na na nag arise Ay, nag-away si Darna at si Regina. Ay, nag-away sila. So yun yung conflict. Okay, nagkaroon ng complication. So that is the middle part of the play. And last, we have the resolution. This is the anti-climax or the part where situation comes stable. So, dito napapasok na, ay, okay na, nagbati na sila. Hindi na pala sila magkaaway. Okay? So, nare-resolve na, okay, from the word itself, from the word itself, resolution, nare-resolve na yung mga problems, yung mga conflict. Okay? Ito na yung end part. Okay? Again, plot, this is the overall structure of the play, what the story is all about. Uh, meron tayong exposition, yung beginning, complication, the middle part, and the resolution or the ending part. We also have setting, characters, dialogue, and theme. Yung setting, ito yung lugar. Okay, lugar and time kung, kung kailan nangyari yung story. Okay, ay yung ano nila yung setting sa hospital. Sa hospital sila, yun yung shooting nila. Okay, yun yung nangyayari na sa ospital. At parang medyo hapon, okay? Pahapon yung kanilang vibe. Ay, medyo gabi kasi marami ilaw. Okay? So that is setting. Characters naman, ito yung mga taong involved sa isang story. Okay? Si Regina, tsaka si uh, Darna, si Narda. Okay? So meron tayong protagonist and antagonist. Yung protagonist, siya yung bida. Okay? Kumbaga, siya yung mabait. Okay? Ay, si Dar, si Dar na yung mabait. Siya yung protagonist kasi siya yung tumutulong lagi sa mga tao. Ay, si Regina yung antagonist kasi siya yung kontrabida. Okay? Kinokontra niya lagi yung bida. 
kinokontra niya lagi si Darna. Okay? Siya, sa yung, siya yung antagonist. Okay? So, yun yung characters. Next, dialogue. This is, uh, these are the words uttered by the characters in the story. Ano yung mga sinasabi nila? Okay? Yun lang yun. Kung ano yung mga binibitawan nilang salita, yung conversation between the two of them or the, between the characters. So, that is dialogue. And theme, this is what the story means. Okay? Ano yung gustong sabihin ng story? Ay, may mga may lesson ba tayong makukuha dito? Ano ba yung um ano ba yung malalaman natin kapag pinanood natin to? Okay, that is the thing. Okay, next naman na uh, performing art na pag-aaralan natin ay yung elements of theater. And we have the playwright, performers, director and production production design. So, playwright, siya lang yung nagsusulat. Okay? The script writer. Playwright. He or she work out the plot in terms of the actual actions to be performed and dialogue to be spoken by the actors. So, siya yung nagsusulat na uh, ay, ito yung sasabihin ni, ni Darna sa part na to. Ay, ito yung sasabihin ni Regina. Okay? Ito yung sa, isasagot niya sa, sa part na to. Okay? So, that is the playwright. Siya yung nagsusulat. Performers, sila yung nag act sa stage. They uh, they are the ones who portray the characters in a play. Okay, performers natin, si Darna at si Regina. Okay, pati si Joshua. Okay, so yun yung ating performers. Next, we have the director. Director, he or she works with the playwright to present which is interpreted and translated into dramatic action. So, director, siya na yung nagpapagalaw ng isang production. Okay? Kung yung playwright, siya yung nagsusulat, yung director naman yung nag, um, nag, nagbibigay. Okay? Nagbibigay na ng action doon sa sinulat ng playwright. Kaya lagi silang magkasama. Kasi kung ano yung sinulat ng playwright, kailangan magigets din siya ng director. Okay? Dapat tugma sila ng insight. Okay? Para yung director, alam niya na, ay, okay, sige, ito yung sinulat mo, ito yung gagawin natin. Okay? Ito yung, ito yung mangyayari sa scene na to. Okay? So, siya yung director. And last, we have the production design. So, sila yung... Uh, Assigned sa paggawa ng scenery, ng props, sa makeup, costumes, lights, music, sound, and all other special effects used in a theater production. Okay? So, ma um, mahirap gumawa ng isang theater production. And ang daming kailangan. Okay? Production design pa lang. Konti pa lang yung scenery, yung... Yung mga props, yung background, kailangan mo pa ng makeup, sino magme-makeup, sino yung wardrobe, mag-aayos ng costume, okay? Sino ang mag-iilaw kasi kailangan yan, okay? Nakaka-apekto din yan, yung lights sa performance, sa kakalabasan ng isang production. Yung music, ano yung gagamitin music, okay? And all other special effects. So, sila, yung production design, sila yung assigned sa paggagawa ng mga yon. And next, we have the elements of cinema or motion picture. Okay? So, yung acting or yung the stars, sila yung mga actors. Okay? Actors, actresses. Okay? Yung acting, this is the art. Okay? Verb. The art of portraying or impersonating a character in the story. Okay? It is the way. Okay? Yung um, pamamaraan. Yung ginagawa mo that is acting. Ginaga, ginagaya mo, ini-impersonate mo yung character sa story, okay, pini-perform mo. That is acting. That is a verb. Performer naman, uh, this one, uh, this person should embody the character he is portraying. So, performer or yung actor dapat uh, napoportray niya ng ayos yung role niya. Okay? Yung character na kanyang pinoportray. So, that is a performer or an actor. Next, we have the set and directors. Yung set, okay, they know the setting of the story and build artificial sets. So, set and directors, uh, alam nila, okay, sa uh, first, uh, first part na to, okay, dito tayo, hospital. Okay, second part, dito naman tayo sa classroom. Okay, third part, dito tayo pupunta sa uh, mall. 
Okay? So, dapat alam nila, sila yung nakakaalam, the set and the directors, kung ano yung mga setting na nasa story. Tapos, sila yung hahanap kung, hahanap kung saan pwede mag-shoot, hahanap kung uh, magbibuild ba tayo ng artificial na set. Okay? So, sila ang set and directors. Next, we have the music and musical director. Sila naman yung in charge, okay, sa pagpili ng kantang gagamitin or magko-compose ba sila ng bagong song or magsusulat ba sila or magagamit lang ba sila ng background music, okay? So sila yung nag uh, sila yung responsible for uh, all music, okay? Even the recording of the artist, sila din yung responsible. Next, the color. Okay, color, ito yung important din sa cinematography. Okay, kasi uh, it also affect kung ano yung mapapanood, ano yung mararamdaman ng tao. Kung medyo, kung medyo sad yung scene, okay, so kailangan yung color medyo sad din. Okay, kung medyo happy naman yung scene, kailangan yung color medyo um, happy din. Okay, so more on ano na to. Pro, uh, post-production, okay? Tapos na. So, more on editing na lang kasi kailangan HD yung color, high definition. Next, we also have the makeup, hair, and costume design. So, uh, sila naman yung responsible sa pag may makeup, okay? Ano yung hair na gagamitin? Kulot ba dapat siya dito? Straight ba dapat yung hair niya? Okay, ano yung makeup? Simple lang ba? Or bongga? Costume design, ano yung gagamitin niya? Pambahay lang ba? Or dapat ba bongga na kagaon? Okay? And last, we have the sound, camera, and special effects technician. So, sila naman yung responsible sa... Um, Sa sound, okay, kung uh, okay ba yung recording, okay, kung yung camera, ano yung angle, okay, saan bang angle, ilan yung camera ang gagamitin, special effects, ano ba yung gagamitin nating uh, special effects sa part na to, okay, may fireworks ba, or may sasabog ba sa part na to, kailan ba may mag-aapoy, okay, so sila yung responsible sa mga ganong bagay. Next, we will discuss lesson 9, which is the principles of art. Okay, and first we have the form. Yung form, this is how specific elements in the artwork are organized to produce a unified whole. Okay, so paano yung mga elements of the artwork? Napag-aralan na natin to on our previous lessons, right? Paano itong mga specific elements na to? Paano siya inorganized? Okay, paano siya... Um, na naging related to one another. Okay, paano siya na unified as a whole sa isang art work? Okay, so that is a form. And we have the primary and secondary features. Yung primary feature, this is how the artwork appears to the viewers. Paano nakikita ng viewers yung isang art work? Okay, on, more on the physical attributes. Okay, yung medium, ano yung ginamit niya? Okay, acrylic paint ba? Oil paint ba? Color. Ano yung mga colors na ginamit? Ginamit niya ba? Warm colors, cool colors, okay? Texture, okay? So, um, kung hindi nyo man talaga nahahawakan yung isang artwork, visual texture, ano ba yung napeperceive ng eyes nyo? Ay, para siyang rough, para siyang smooth, okay? And size, ano ba, gaano ba siya kalaki? Parang medyo maliit yung subject, okay? Paano ba, yun, paano ba pinipresent yung size sa isang artwork? Okay? So, that is primary features. Paano mo nakikita ang isang artwork physically? Okay? Yung physical attributes. Next, the secondary features. These are primary features of the artwork relate to one another. Okay? So, kung yung primary features, again, ito lang yung nakikita mo. Okay? Ito lang yung nakikita mo. Physically, physical attributes, physical qualities. Yung secondary features, paano naman sila nagko-correlate to one another? Okay? Dito papasok yung balance, proportion, unity, and harmony. Okay? Ay, yung ginamit niya is, uh, um, yung ginamit niyang shape, okay? Tapos nilagyan niya ng warm color. Okay? So, parang ang nangyayari is ganto. 
Okay? So, i-correlate mo yung isang uh, primary feature sa isa pang primary feature. Paano sila nag-unified? Okay? Bakit may harmony sa isang artwork? Okay? Ay, yun yung ginamit niyang color. Tapos, uh, uh, color red yung ginamit niyang color kasi it symbolizes love. Okay? So, kaya, puro heart din yung shapes na ginamit niya, geometric shapes. Okay? So, yung texture niya, medyo may pagka-smooth kasi it, re uh, it represents... Um, It represents uh, love, okay? A flow, grace, okay? So, that is secondary features. Yung uh, correlation na ng mga primary features, okay? Next, we have the content. The content, this is the message of the artist that he or she wants to convey through his art. Okay? So, content, ito yung message. Ano yung gustong iparating ng artist sa kanyang artwork? Ano yung gusto niyang sabihin? Okay, that is the content. And content can be factual, conventional, and subjective. Factual, this is a, this is a literal interpretation of the artwork. Okay? Literal. Okay? Kung ano yung pinapakita niya, kung ano yung nakikita mo, yun na. Okay? Images, attributes, actions, and poses. So, may nakita kang uh, dalawang magkayakap. Okay, sa, sa artwork. Okay? Imagine, may isang artwork, tapos dalawa silang magkayakap. Okay? Ang factual content nun or yung literal interpretation mo ay sila ay lovers. Okay? Sila ang, ang, binibig, ang, ang gustong sabihin ng artist is about love. Okay? That is the content. Kapag factual, ha? literal interpretation. Kapag conventional naman, this is a consideration of the basic genres and the figurative meanings. Okay? So, ito medyo malalim na ng konti kasi meron ng mga symbols. May mga signs na. Okay? May figurative meaning na nakailangan mong malaman kung ano yung ibig sabihin. Okay? So, merong babae na, uh, okay, merong babae na nagbigay uh, ng, or, or merong girl na nagre-raise ng flag. Okay? Flag ng country nila. So, uh, ano kayo yung meaning nun? Ano yung kayong deeper meaning nun? Bakit kaya flag yung ginamit? Ano kayong sinisimbolize ng flag? Okay? Maaaring about, um, Uh, about uh, love for her country, di ba? So, mayroon na siyang signs and symbols na kailangan mong mahanap yung meaning. Okay? May figurative meaning na. So, mas deeper na tong konte, tong conventional, kesa sa factual. Kasi yung factual, di ba, literal lang siya. Kung ano nakikita mo, yun na. Conventional, mayroon ng mga symbols na kailangan mong uh, malaman yung meaning. And last, subjective naman, uh, this takes into consideration the effect of form and content on the viewers of the art. So, subjective, it is more on your feeling na, okay, as a viewer. Ano yung nararamdaman ko kapag nakikita ko tong artwork na to? Feeling ko ang lungkot-lungkot. Ay, feeling ko ang happy, ay, ang saya-saya. Okay, subjective. Kasi, iba-iba na tayo ng nararamdaman. Iba-iba tayo ng interpretation of the artwork. Okay? Content, this is the message of the artist. It can be factual, literal, conventional, may symbols, and subjectives, it is um, more on the interpretation of the viewer. Okay? And last, we have the context. Okay? Last principle of art, we have the context. And context, this is the various circumstances that influence how a work of art was produced and interpreted. Okay? So, paano yung mga, um, paano nabuo yung isang artwork? Okay? Ano ba yung mga nakaka, ano ba yung mga influences ng artwork na yun? Saan ba siya galing? Bakit ba siya ginawa? Sino ba yung inspiration ng artist? Ano ba yung nakita niya? Ano ba yung napanood niya? Okay? Bakit ginawa ang isang artwork? Okay? What influences the artwork? Okay, yun yung context. And context can be primary and secondary. Primary, this is a characteristic of the artist. His personality, his beliefs, interests, and values. So, primary context, this is more on the artist. Ano yung pagkatao ko? Okay? Kunyari, I'm a jolly person. Okay? Happy ako. Uh, I'm joyful. I'm friendly. So, ang gagawin kong artwork is pwedeng... Um, uh, Colorful, right? Maraming colors. Tapos maraming mga tao. Kasi nga ako yung friendly. So maraming friends. Okay? Maraming persons involved. 
Okay, so that is the primary context of my artwork because I am joyful, because I am jolly, because I am friendly, right? That is my personality, that is my characteristic. So, ginawa ko siya, tinurn ko siya into an artwork. So, that is my primary context. Okay, based on the characteristic of the artist. On the other hand, secondary context naman, it pertains to the setting, okay, or the historical period time in which the artwork was produced. Okay, kunyari, um, I'm, I was diagnosed, okay, for example, I was diagnosed with a, uh, with a disease, okay? Uh, so, I'm, uh, I am battling with my disease. So, ako ay parang gusto ko magbigay ng hope, okay, during this time. So, I will make an artwork that expresses hope. Okay, na nagbibigay ng hope. Okay? And uh, that is my secondary context. Context, sorry. My secondary context. Kasi it pertains to the setting yung nangyayari ngayon. Okay, yung oras na ngayon. Kasi nga, I was diagnosed. I want to bring hope to others. So, in this period of time, okay, nagginawa ko yung artwork na to, this is the secondary context. And maybe kapag sumikat yung artwork ko na yun, maaalala ng tao, okay, what influences that artwork, okay, that artwork, ano yung nag-influence sa kanya? Babalik tayo sa kanyang naranasan, the secondary context, yung setting, okay, kailan ba siya ginawa? Ay, ginawa siya nung panahong siya ay na-diagnose ng ganto. Okay? So, that is the secondary context. Okay? So, we will move on sa principles of design. Napag-aralan na natin previously the principles of art. Now, we will move on sa design. And we have first is yung balance. Balance, this is the distribution of the visual weight of objects, color, texture, and space. Okay? So, distribution. Okay? Dapat equal. Equal amount. Kasi nga balance. Right? Visual weight of objects, color, texture, and space. Balance can be symmetrical, asymmetrical, and radial. Symmetrical, the elements used on one side of the design are similar to those on the other side. Ibig sabihin, symmetrical siya kasi yung elements na, di, na, sa, uh, na sa isang side ay parehas lang din sa mga nasa kabilang side. Okay? Equal. Okay, elements na nakikita mo sa isang side ay ganun din yung elements na nakikita mo sa isang side. Symmetrical. Asymmetrical naman is the, uh, wherein the sides of the composition are different but still look balanced. Okay, asymmetrical in contrast sa symmetrical na pareho, pareho yung both sides. Sa asymmetrical, hindi pareho. Okay, yung elements ng isang side ay maaring hindi ganun din yung elements ng isang side. But, okay, but, they still look balanced. Balance pa din kahit hindi sila sobrang hawig, hindi sila parehas. Okay, mamaya titignan natin yung example. And last, we have the radial. The elements are arranged around a central point. So, radial, ito ay pabilog. Okay, pabilog siya around a central point. Merong gitna. So, nakapalibot lang yung mga elements sa central point na yon Okay, so the, this is the example. Yeah. So, symmetrical balance, di ba? Kung ano yung nakikita mo sa one side, yun din yung same lang nakikita mo sa other side. Balance. Asymmetrical balance naman, hindi sila parehong-pareho na nakikita mo sa isang side at sa isang side, but still, they are balance. Okay, balance pa din. Radial balance naman ay nakapalibot sila sa isang central point. Okay, yung gitna. So, nakapalibot sila. So, nag, uh, it uh, shows balance. Okay, radial balance. Next, we have the emphasis, movement, and pattern. Emphasis, this is the part of the design that catches the viewer's attention. Okay? Make one area stand out by contrasting it with other areas. So, ito yung nakakakuha ng attention natin. Okay? Ito yung dahilan kung bakit tayo napapatingin sa isang artwork kasi it make one area stand out. Okay? Nag, nag, uh, uh, nakikita mo talaga siya, nag stand out siya because it contrasts with other areas. 
Next, we have the movement. Okay, mamaya titingnan natin yung mga example. Movement, this is the path uh, where the viewer's eye takes when looking through the art. It is implied along lines, edges, shape, and color. So, napag-aralan na, na, na natin to in our previous uh, discussion, right? Yung movement, it can be um, actual movement or implied. Okay? ba diba? Kapag actual, natural lang. Kapag implied naman, okay, nakikita natin na para naman siyang gumagalaw because may... Uh, Merong mga lines, okay? may shapes, may colors. Okay, so, there's a movement. Pattern naman is the repetition of objects, shapes, lines, or symbols all over the space or picture plane. Repetition of objects. May pattern. Okay? Next, we have proportion. Ito yung feeling of unity created when all parts relate well with each other. So, nagkakaroon ng harmony, kumbaga, okay, may unity because all parts ay correlated with each other, hindi lang basta nilagay. Ito ay, meron silang relationship, ay proportion. Repetition, on the, on the other hand, it works with patterns to make the work seem active. So, repetition, um, uh, para siyang pinaulit-ulit na pattern para magkaroon ng uh, um, movement or parang magkaroon ng uh, active yung elements of the art. Rhythm naman, it is created when one or more elements of the signs are used repeatedly to produce feeling of organized, continuous, sometimes flowing movement. Okay, so meron naman siyang uh, movement, okay, to produce a feeling of organized, okay, para siyang continuous, sunod-sunod, organized pattern. That is rhythm. Yeah, and last, we have variety and unity. Variety, it is used of several elements of design that adds interest, guide the viewer's eye through and around the art. Okay? So, iba-iba naman siya. May variations na. Okay? So, nagkakaroon ng interest yung viewer's eye. Iba-iba na. Okay? Parang na, na-attract ka na kasi iba-iba na yung tinitingnan mo. May variety na. And unity, this is the feeling of harmony between and among parts of the work of art. It creates a feeling of completeness. Okay? Ay, kompleto na kasi uh, parang magka, although hindi sila magkapareha pero merong harmony kang nararamdaman. Okay? That is unity. Yan. So, this is the example. Okay? Pattern, again, repetition of elements, of objects. Contrast, yan, dalawa, magkaiba. Emphasis, ayan. So, makikita mo na uh, pare-pareha sila. Okay? May emphasis. Balance. Okay? So, hindi sila pareho but still they are balance. Scale. Okay? Malaki, maliit, malaki, maliit. Harmony, parang merong um, feeling, may unity. Okay? So, parang nagkakaisa sila if they are put together. Rhythm or movement, ayan, may gumagalaw, okay? Produced a feeling of organized, parang may movement na nangyayari. Unity naman, this is a feeling of harmony between and among parts of the work of art. So, may feeling of completeness ka na, okay? So, mayroong uh, malaki sa gitna, tas dalawang malit sa gilid. And variety, okay, variety, iba-iba sila nang nakikita, okay? Pare-parehas lang, pero may panagkakaiba sila. Okay, so may variety ka nang nakikita. So that is the principles of design. And last topic for unit 4 is the rule of thirds and the seven Da Vincian principles. Okay, the rule of thirds, this is a surface with two equally spaced vertical lines and two equally spaced horizontal lines. So, ito yung uh, kung di nyo pa siya nalalaman, common siya sa uh, photography. Okay? Pero, kinagamit din natin yung rule of thirds kapag nagawa tayo ng mga artworks, mga visual arts. So, uh, nagkakaroon tayo ng nine equal parts with four intersecting points. So, uh, ginagamit natin to to achieve balance, okay? Balance sa ating subject by placing another object at the point opposite to the first one. Yan, so this is the example of the rule of thirds. Again, hinati natin yung ating uh, picture plane, okay, yung surface natin, sa two equally spaced vertical lines 
and two equally spaced horizontal lines. And kapag nahati na natin, nagkaroon na tayo ng nine equal parts with four intersecting points. Okay? And in order for us to achieve balance, minsan nilalagay natin sa uh, right side, okay? Kapag inilagay mo sa right side, that is, uh, it can... Uh, it can result in a pleasing composition. Kapag nasa gitna naman, okay lang din. Um, it can also result at a pleasing composition. Kapag nasa left, ganun din. Okay? So, nagkakaroon ng balance. Question. How can we become a genius? Paano nga ba tayo nagiging genius? Okay? Nag-aaral ka ba? Ano ba yung ginagawa mo? Okay? According kay Da Vinci, okay, kailala naman natin si Leonardo Da Vinci, the very famous artist. Okay, meron tayong tinatawag na seven Da Vincian principles. We have the curiosita, dimostrazione, sensazione, fumato, arte o scienza, corporalita, and connexion. Okay, so yan yung seven Da Vincian principles. Isa-isahin natin. Curiosita, this is a heightened level of wonder and continuous search to know and learn more. Okay? Curious ka about life. Okay? Nag-wonder ka. What if ganto? What if ganto yung gawin ko? What if ganto? Okay? Paano kaya kung ganto yung, kung ganto yung mangyayari? What if ang mundo pala ay square? Okay? You are curious. Okay? Level of wonder and continuous search to know and learn more. That is number one. Number two, uh, demonstra demonstrazione. Uh, this is a commitment to test knowledge and to persist in this test. Okay? So, you experience both success and failure. Ito yung may ano na. Mm. You have the commitment na, okay, I want to learn about this. So, gagawin ko to. Okay? I am committed to this knowledge. So, I, uh, bahala na. I can experience success, but I can also experience failure. Demonstrazione. Next, the sensazione. This is experiencing life through refinement of the senses. Okay? So, ito na yung uh, kailangan daw. Hindi lang tayo nakafocus sa kung ano yung nakikita natin. Eyes should do more than see. Okay? Hindi lang tayo nakafocus sa ano nakikita natin. Ano yung naririnig natin? Ano yung naaamoy natin? Okay, let's explore daw. Okay, let's, let's explore. Let's be curious. Okay, kasi lahat daw ng bagay, they have deeper meaning. Okay, so eyes should do more than see. Okay, let's uh, have a refinement of our senses. Next, the fumato. This is a going up in smoke, accepting life's paradoxes and uncertainties. Ito yung uh, tinatanggap mo na hindi lahat ng bagay ay may cost and effect. For example, kapag ginawa ko to, baka ito yung maging mangyari. Kapag ginawa ko to, baka ito yung mangyari. Okay? Because there are events that happen even logic can explain. Okay? So kahit, uh, kahit, daw ano yung gawin mo okay hindi daw siya laging cost and effect okay maaring ito ay pwedeng ganun talaga ang kakalabasan ganun ang mangyayari kaya hindi lang dapat hindi lang dahil sa ginawa mo na cost okay even logic can explain that is fomato Next, we have the art and scienza or art or sciences. So, it is finding a balance between art and science or logic and imagination. So, uh, ito daw yung hindi ka lang nakafocus more on arts, hindi ka lang nakafocus more on science. Okay? So, dapat yung whole brain mo, yung pag-iisip mo ay may balance lang. Kay balance lang between arts and science. Okay? Hindi ka, wala kang pinapanigan. Ay, gusto ko dapat science-based. Ako hindi ako naniniwala sa mga ganyan, sa mga culture na yan na beliefs. Kasi based on science tayo, science uh, facts. Okay? So, dapat daw, in order for you to be genius, kailangan balance lang yung paniniwala mo between art and science or logic and imagination next we have the corporalita it is taking care of one's body healthy habits are practiced and sustained sound mind is usually the product of a sound body so corporalita 
isinasabi lang nito na dapat daw inaalagaan mo din ang katawan mo, hindi lang yung utak mo, okay? Dapat inaalagaan mo din yung iyong physical body. Why? Kasi kapag healthy yung body mo, healthy din yung mind mo. Nakakapag-isip ka ng maayos, nakakapaggawa ka ng mga bagay, okay? So, corporalita is just taking care of one's body because sound mind is usually the product of a sound body. And last, we have the connessione, where is uh, realizing that all things are interconnected. Discovering patterns in the way things work and how things and lives work out. Seeing how events in the past led to the present state of affairs. So, connessione, nare-realize mo na, oh, okay, kaya pala ganito, kasi ganito yung nangyari. Okay, they are interconnected. All things are interconnected. Okay, kaya ganito yung nangyari, okay, discovering patterns. Ganito kasi yung nangyari sa past, okay, yung past events. So, kaya ganito yung nararanasan ngayon in the present time, okay, kasi they are interconnected, okay, may pattern tayong nakikita. Okay, so that is connessione. Okay, to better understand the seven Da Vincian principles, we will watch this video presentation. What do geniuses do differently? Let's turn to Leonardo da Vinci, a well-known artist, but also architect, scientist, musician, mathematician, inventor, anatomist, geologist, astronomer, cartographer, botanist, historian, and writer. He had a very specific approach to life that anyone could learn and apply. In this video, I'll explain how you could develop your essential elements of genius, the seven da Vincian principles. Number one is curiosita, an insatiably curious approach to life, an unrelenting quest for continuous learning. The desire to unlock the mysteries of life is something that many of history's leaders and inventors had. Break it into two basic questions, what if and how come? You know that you're embracing curiosity if you ask yourself these two questions multiple times each day. What if? asks your brain to project into the future. It helps you see opportunities where you might have missed them. It helps you make connections in a sneaky way to get your brain more goal-oriented. How come gets you into why. Instead of passively observing the world, how come helps you demonstrate and question both your actions and other motives. Number two is demonstrazione, A commitment to test knowledge through experience persistence, and a willingness to learn from mistakes. This principle is empowering. It's the embodiment of taking your life into your own hands. It literally tells us to test every idea, don't take anything for granted, and experience life firsthand. Life should be an experiment and that we should have a series of amazing hypotheses every day and that we should be testing them. A hypothesis consists of two-part statements. If, then. If I do action, then outcome will proceed. Number three is sensazione. The continual refinement of the senses, especially sight, as the means to enliven in experience. Fill in the blanks. We forget to savor and sense our experiences. When's the last time you actually stopped to smell the roses? Sure, literal roses, but also metaphorical roses. When was the last time you stopped to savor an experience? Da Vinci was incredibly inspired by the world around him. The more honored his senses, the more heightened his genius became. Number four is the few motto. The willingness to embrace ambiguity, paradox, and uncertainty. You need the unique ability to understand the extreme opposites of opinions and phenomenon. Explore unknowns and revel in the uncertainty. Majority of people are uncomfortable with unanswered questions. We stick to what we know and immediately do a Google search when we're even slightly confused. Embrace your ambiguity and list situations from your life where you are befuddled. Explore the feelings that come up and try to come up with answers as well. Number five, arte and scienza. The development of balance between science and art, logic and imagination. This concept speaks directly to the idea of whole brain thinking. Which system or statement sounds more like you? 
Were you balanced? Da Vinci was a big believer of using both parts of your brain. After looking through his notebooks, you realize that he was the original mind mapper. Some ways you can capture more artist or shanza is by combining elements of art and writing into forms of explanation. Connect the dots and depict parts of your life. Number six is corporalita. The cultivation of grace, amber dexterity, fitness, and poise. Da Vinci was also really athletic. From early on, he realized that if he wanted his mind to perform at optimal levels, his body also had to be at top shape. Sleep and diet are tied to both mental and physical health. Physical health is tied to mental health. One way you can capture more corporalita is by cultivating ambidextrity. You can start by trying to do simple tasks with your non-dominant hand. Number seven is kyonesone. The recognition and appreciation for the interconnectedness of all things and phenomena. This is probably the most complex principle and it has to do with system thinking. System thinking is when you are able to take vast amounts of information and create routines, lists, and organization. It also has to do with pattern recognition. You need to be on the constant looking for patterns and relationships. When you can create systems and recognize patterns in your life, you are able to cultivate true genius. Here's a question to ask yourself. If you were going to write a book about your life, what would it be about if you couldn't make it chronological? Okay, so I hope you learned a lot for, from this video lecture. And please be ready because next meeting, I will uh, call some students for a graded recitation about all the topics, all the lessons I discussed here on uh, here sa ating video lecture. So, um, just it is just an assessment kung talagang pinanood nyo ito because hindi ko na ito babalikan. So, that's it. Thank you so much for watching this video lecture and I hope you have a great day ahead. Thank you!